delighted to introduce I'm delighted to introduce our day two strand two speaker, Rachel Pooley. Rachel has worked as a young learner teacher and teacher trainer for almost two decades, mostly in Southeast Asia. She has a Cambridge Delta with a young learner specialism and an MA in professional development for language education. She is an active member of the YLT SIG committee as one of the SIG's joint events coordinators who contributed to the organizing of this web conference. Rachel is based in Bangkok, Thailand. During Rachel's talk, we recommend watching and speak of you. And if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box. Without any further ado, please share your screen, Rachel. Um, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? I hope you can. Um, so good evening. Thank you so much for that introduction, David. Thank you, Carol. It's an absolute privilege to be following on from Carol um, on her wonderful talk, really emotional talk there, I thought. Um, so welcome to my talk. As um, David said, my name's Rachel. I'm speaking from Bangkok in Thailand. It's eight o'clock, so you can stalk, you can see Bangkok Bank in the background. Today, I'll be focusing on another C word, um, the, the C word of community. Now, it's interesting that when Carol asked in her talk this, um, just earlier, one of the first questions was, why do we need global skills? And a lot of you in the chat box all answered, because we are a global community. And also, it's interesting to hear David Valence uh, keynote speech yesterday also talk about um, community. So I'll just um, stop my slide there. So um, it's interesting that my talk is about the idea of community. So I'll be sharing some personal and professional experiences of um, the pandemic over the past 18 years up to now, which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. Um, I'll focus on what a community is, why it's important, um, and I'll give, um, a, I'll share an experience of a community response to teaching online. My teachers here in Thailand, uh, their response um, to build by building a community when we turn to teaching online. I'll give some more examples of professional communities, um, and then I'll summarize with the seven benefits of a community. Um, it would be really great if uh, you could uh, use the chat box to talk between yourselves. I'll be asking some open questions. Um, so please do use the chat box to make it as interactive as possible for you all. So uh, what is a community? Um, a community is a social unit, a group of living things with commonalities such as norms, religion, customs, or identity. Um, I'd like you to put maybe your idea of what a community is or what your community is in the chat box as I'm talking here. My communities, I have many, thinking about it, there are lots, um, include some of them, my local neighborhood community. Um, as, as you know, I live in Bangkok. We have the street, the, the street food sellers I see all day, my local 7-Eleven um, cashiers who I say hello to on the way to work every morning, my, my SkyTrain um, security guards. My dialectal or speech community. Now I'm from the Northeast of England and we have a very strong dialect up there called Geordie. And that's a very big part of my identity and a very big part of a community that we have up there. Uh, my work community, people that I work with, I was at the office this morning at 7.30 saying hello to everyone, um, which was fantastic to see everyone this morning. My professional community, which includes the YLT SIG, um, other communities I'm involved in, um, other, other people that I've worked with professionally outside of work, i.e. TEFL being the, a big one. My political community, we all have political views, political leanings, and I think that the friends that we have, the communities that we go to to talk about these politics uh, is really, really important. I have a musical community. I'm a huge musical music fan. Um, all my friends are huge music fans, um, and part, a huge part of my community is to go to concerts, to go to watch music, live music, listen to music and talk about music. So that also helps build a community. And finally, not finally, um, another example is my football community. I'm from Newcastle and um, my team is Newcastle United. Um, it's been in the news quite a lot recently. Um, so my football community, we go, you know, when I'm in the UK, I go to the football match, we watch it in the pub, which is also a huge part of, of a community as well. Now, other communities, I was thinking about this, other communities, 
um, include uh, pubs in the UK. The local pub is a huge community centre. Gardens and allotments, if you're lucky enough to have an allotment or you go to a garden centre. Crafts and hobbies, whatever interests you may have, that also helps you build a community. Um, schools, obviously, if you've got children, that's a huge part of the community. Community schools, you have parents, teachers, all the staff that work at the schools, all the children that work at the schools as well. Book clubs, um, if you're interested in different types of books, that's another example of a community. Sports centres, gyms, religion and religious places are all places where people go because they have commonalities um, or customs that they identify with. I wonder what other communities you can think of and what communities you belong to. So I do hope you're using the chat to talk about this. Um, I'll move on a little bit to the pandemic. The pandemic is not over, unfortunately. Um, I'm speaking from Bangkok in Thailand. I'm going to give you a quick overview of my pandemic experience. Um, if you've ever been to Bangkok, you will know that it's loud, busy. The traffic is crazy. There are millions of people there. It's colourful, smelly. Fantastic. I love Bangkok. I've lived here for, for such a long time. I absolutely love it. This is what it looked like before the pandemic. This is a, a, one of the main tourist areas, Koh San Road, very famous. Um, literally, when COVID hit last March, overnight, it went from this to this. Um, it was pretty scary. I'm sure all of you have got very, very similar experiences. Um, and it's something that we'll never forget. However, we have learned so much over the past 18 months professionally um, due to the pandemic. That might not have happened had it not happened. Um, just to give you a quick timeline of my pandemic. In 2020, we were very lucky. The first wave hit in March. I work for the British Council here in Bangkok. The British office, Council offices closed on the 15th of March. Within two days, all of our teachers were teaching adult classes online, which is a huge achievement. achievement. Two days to get Zoom trained, online teaching trained, work together, planning all the materials shared while we were stuck at home. We weren't allowed in the offices. We weren't allowed to leave the house at all. Um, and then less than two weeks after that, all our young learner classes were online. And this was from early years all the way up to upper secondary, which again is a huge, huge achievement. All our teachers did it. We went from teaching face to face, all the routines, everything that we know from teaching um, in a classroom based, environment suddenly had to change and become online. We, we learned to do that in, in 10 days. Again, fantastic achievement. And I think globally, that was a fantastic achievement. We were lucky in Thailand. In June, um, our first wave was over and we resumed face-to-face -face, um, teaching with social distancing. However, 2021 was a very different story. In January, we had a very brief second wave, um, two weeks of teaching online. And by then, it wasn't really emergency teaching. We were quite used to it. Our teachers were great. They were, they were very, very quick to, to switch to face-to-face, -to -face, back to online, back to face-to-face -to -face again. However, April, we had our biggest and most serious wave. Um, we had our third wave. All the schools closed completely. Um, or then um, by May, all schools, all offices uh, were closed. We were working from home. We weren't really allowed to leave the house. By June, we were on a 9 p.m. curfew. By July, all shops were closed, including the shopping malls. And if you've ever been to Bangkok, you know how important those shopping malls are to this city. They are like the life, the beating heart of the city. That's where everybody goes because it's where everything is. They closed. Um, restaurants closed. It was delivery only. No public transport after 8 p.m. The whole city was dark. Um, and that lasted until now, this morning. I'm very pleased to say we went back face to face. So this morning we actually taught young learners early years all the way up to secondary to upper secondary this morning for the first time since April, which was amazing. Just to see those children smiling, really excited to see their friends again was absolutely amazing. So I'm very happy to be able to report that. Um, but, you know, the impact that this has had on the students is clear, on the teachers is also clear. The teachers went from a very, very busy, bustling staff room. I'm sure you, you, you all had the same experience. Very, very busy, bustling staff room where we shared ideas. We talked about learners. We talked about learning. We talked about our classes. We had um, training sessions, development meetings. Our line managers were there. Our line managers were there if you're, if you're a manager. We went from that to sitting at home, isolation station, alone, 
um, struggling to, to move from face-to-face -to, -face to online and still being able to deliver the best quality um, to our students. How did we manage? I mean, I struggled, I have to, I have to admit, we all struggled, I think. Um, being alone and being away from my, my work community that I used to see five days a week. Um, it got me thinking about the importance of community and something that I think perhaps we took for granted before is now very much not taken for granted, but very, very important um, in our lives, much more important than we realise. But I think now that we realise, so something good to come out of the, panic, it, the pandemic is that we now value our communities and all of our communities. Um, so when I was researching this talk, I was trying, trying to find out why a community is so important to us. And, and I found some really interesting articles and there's references at the end of this slideshow. Humans are social beings. We are social beings. In even the most introverted of us value friendship. We need our friends, our communities, personal and professional. The need to belong to something, I shared all those my, all of my communities with you earlier, um, is deeply ingrained in our nature. Belonging to a group or community we can identify with helps us develop a strong sense of personal and collective identity. And since we are inherently sociable beings, feeling disconnected from others can deeply affect our self-perception perception, and emotional health. Now, I'm using the symbol of the yin and yang symbol um, in the middle of this slide because I believe in balance. I believe in dark and light. I believe in good and bad. And even though the pandemic has been horrendous, is still horrendous, I do believe that some good has come out of the pandemic. Um, I think it truly brought out the best in us professionally and personally. Um, so the dark side of the pandemic, lockdown measures and work from home arrangements have made it harder to meet and connect with others. If you're, if like me, you live away from your family um, or you live in a foreign country that you're not, you, that you don't have such a big community or, or a big network of friends yet, um, it's very, very difficult. Feelings of isolation, loneliness, mental health issues are on the rise. Um, however, lockdown changes have prompted many people to reconsider the significance of neighbourhood feeling, bringing the concept of meaningful belonging back into the spotlight. Now, I've seen, I saw from the beginning of the pandemic, my neighbourhood, daily people were driving up. There's a, there's a homeless community that just around the corner here, and daily people were driving up and dropping off food, blankets, medicine, water, um, to these homeless people who ordinarily would work on the streets, but they couldn't because of the pandemic and there was nobody on the streets to sell anything to. Um, our, my building downstairs had a, a cabinet which was put out every night where people who, where there was food people hadn't used at work or things that they didn't need, they would, bottles of water again, they would fill this cabinet up every night and people would take it as they needed. So this sense of community um, immediately became apparent to me um, and I really noticed it and I thought it was fantastic. Um, I'm sure you've all had experiences like in your own communities. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you've taken part in these community drives. At work, my teachers, our teachers here in Bangkok have also had their own very communities and their response to the pandemic from teaching on to teaching online to being isolated from home was to set up a new community. And that's what I'm going to share with you next. Um, so a community of practice. Now, our teachers were missing the staff room after a couple of days of teaching online. And they rang me up, one of them rang me up and suggested that they held meetings. No management to be there, completely teacher-led, um, just to have a chat as if they were in the staff room. So they reached out to each other within a few days and set up these communities. And it, it reached from, um, it was divided up, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so they had weekly meetings. Um, sometimes it was at lunchtime, sometimes it was first thing, thing in the morning with a cup of coffee. They organised it themselves, weekly meetings to chat um, about work related things. It was set up by our coordinators, but there was no management there, which meant that the teachers felt that they could speak about what they want. It was very, very uh, teacher led um, so they could speak openly, freely. It was divided by life stage. Um, so we had early years, lower primary, upper primary, lower secondary, upper secondary, and you could go to as many or as few as you wanted. They were really, really well attended. I mean, they were probably better attended than a lot of insets I've been to when it's face to face as well. Um, teacher led, as I say, one of the best things that um, our teachers were saying about it was 
In Bangkok, in Thailand, we have six, seven, eight, nine teaching centers across the country. And sometimes uh, these um, communities of practice, sometimes the teachers were meeting each other for the first time. Um, they'd seen emails, they'd seen names on emails, but they had never actually spoken to each other before. So again, a great thing about the pandemic is the improvement of accessibility. Um, to be able to meet your colleagues who might not work in the same city as you, but do the same job. Very teacher-led, bottom up. By bottom up, I meant, I mean, um, it was teachers' ideas. It was all teacher-generated. The management, which would be top down, had nothing, no input, nothing to do with it. They just let, they were just happy. We were just happy that teachers were so keen to talk about um, their job, their roles, the students, teaching online, all the new techniques and methods that they were having to learn literally overnight. Um, uh, there was no set agenda. Sometimes they wanted to just to talk about the pandemic. Sometimes they wanted to talk about students, problem students. How do I get teenagers to turn the cameras on? Um, how do I get um, the primary students to stop talking um, all at the same time when you want to listen to answers? Um, sometimes it was just to have a cup of coffee and ask how people were how people's families were, you know, so the, the, the lack of agenda, I think, really worked because it was it was just a chance to, to be a community and, and talk to thick talk as a community would talk. Um, sometimes they were themed that um, we had a, um, we had some great ones. There was a show and tell. I met um, dogs, cats. I met a couple of lizards as well. And um, when I joined these communities occasionally, funny hat day, bring your pet to Zoom day, show and tell. Um, I've seen lots of people's houses, the inside of lots of people's houses, uh, different views around Bangkok and Thailand, which has been great as well. Um, every week, um, one person made notes and shared them countrywide. A lot of them were like teaching tips, top tips for, which was a big hit, top tips for teaching early years, top tips for screen um, fatigue, if you get a headache, remember to have a break, drink some water. There was lots of that not happening in the beginning. Um, so this, this community was built up because of the pandemic and these teachers spoke to each other more, I think, than they did before the pandemic. They met people who work for the same company, the same country, just different centres, same city sometimes, but they've never actually had that opportunity to meet up. So it's been really, a really, really successful um, community in response to the pandemic. So as I say, so a lot of great things have come out of this pandemic. Um, so more communities um, that I've seen um, in professional um, on Facebook and things like that, social media, speaking to colleagues, speaking to, to, to other friends who work as teachers and teacher educators around the world. I'm sure you are part of a lot of these already. If you're not, have a think about maybe setting one up in your teaching center. Swap shops. Uh, swap shops is where um, people take an idea and everyone takes an idea and exchanges ideas. Uh, really simple, but very, very effective. Coffee breaks. Just getting together, grabbing a cup of coffee, sitting and have it as if you were in the staff room, coming out, stop, stopping, looking at, um, at PowerPoints and things and just looking at each other and having a chat. Chat and choose again, similar to coffee break, but with lunch, cakes, people bringing in cakes, people bringing their own lunches. Action research groups. Um, I saw a lot of people who were doing MAs and diplomas and other sort of academic style um, courses at the time getting together and uh, talking about questionnaires, talking about research, talking about things that they have to do and sharing ideas there, which is, was brilliant. Special interest groups. We are a special interest group. This is why you are here. Um, IA Tevel has many, many different special interest groups. We are the YLT special interest group. Um, I've seen many, many more on um, social media developing because of this pandemic. And um, planning groups in the teaching center. My teachers, my colleagues quite, quite often um, informally we'll get together and talk about what they were doing that weekend with, the, with, their, um, with their learners, if they have the same level, the same age group, exchanging ideas for a difficult reading task, um, exchanging resources and materials. This has been happening online a lot more, um, sharing of ideas and sharing of different platforms and different um, ideas, different new things that they've found. And social media platforms as well. There's been a huge boom in this symbol at the bottom, TikTok. Now, I've never used TikTok, but my colleagues tell me it's what the kids are doing these days. Really, really popular. I am a member of lots of different professional communities on Facebook. Obviously, the YLT SIG, IA TEFL, many others as well. Um, and it's just a fantastic way to network, to share ideas. Sometimes just to have a whinge as well about what's happening and managing to cope 
and using your community as um, a support network as well. Um, social media is also great for asynchronous communities. If you don't have time to join a meeting, this, these things happen um, over time and you can go back and have a look at things that people have shared as well, which are also a really, really great way if you perhaps don't have the same timetable as other people. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go through to summarize a bit the benefits of community. Um, and I'm thinking about professional communities here, the benefits um, that we have. So number one, support and safety. I'm sure a lot of you have felt um, at times over the past couple of years quite unsafe um, and insecure. Um, and I think we've all felt that. So I think communities um, are one of the main reasons behind the importance of community is that can help fight feelings of hopelessness, despair, and give us the certainty that we are safe when surrounded by our community. Connection and belonging is a huge thing, I think, um, especially if you live abroad, away from friends and family like I do, or especially if you're in a city that, that you haven't been able to leave because of lockdown um, and go and see your family, even if you live in a city with friends and you haven't been able to leave your house. Um, that connection is um, really, really important. And finding others with the same values, interests and worldviews as I believe we have in this YLT special interest group makes us realize that we're not alone and it makes us feel val valued. Influence. Experiencing the positive influence of like-minded people, as we are all here, um, is another reason behind the importance of community. Communities can influence us and motivate us to invest in our well-being and bring positive changes to our lives. Now, well-being at work, well-being at home, equally important, and bringing positive changes to our well-being at work um, affects our, our home lives as well, I think. Number four, sharing. I've just talked about how my teachers share ideas, share planning tips, share materials, share resources, share new platforms that they've found. Kahoot and Wordwall have really taken off. And sharing activities, ideas, and feelings reinforces not only our sense of self, but also adds worth and value to the community. What we do as individuals add value, adds value to our communities. Sharing is caring after all. Learning. We are in the teaching profession. Teachers are learners as well as teachers. Um, and communities are usually built around common interests. Learning from these common interests can help us reach insights that we may not have reached on our own. I've been a member of this, of this special interest group for five years and the amount that I've learned from colleagues coming to webinars and conferences like this is immense. Something that I wouldn't necessarily have done alone or in my day-to-day -day work. So it's, it's, it's because of that, they're built around common interests. This really, really supports our growth as teachers and teacher educators. Acceptance, number six, acceptance. Community belonging helps us accept that sometimes we're strong and sometimes we are vulnerable and we need the support of others to avoid unnecessary emotional struggles and pain. This is something that I have definitely learned over the pandemic, that I need my friends, I need my community sometimes to support me, sometimes just to listen, sometimes just to, to share an ear. Um, and I think as everyone has noticed this over the past um, 18 months to two years, and even now, especially now, are still using that. And finally, success. The importance of community goes beyond our personal sphere and extends to professional development. The more connections we have, the more chance of success we have the more connections the connections that i've made since being a part of this ylt sig is huge i've spoken to gail ellis i'm following on from carol reed um, in a web conference which is something i never dreamed of doing five years ago um it's such a good place to start networking as you know because i'm sure you're all talking in the chat to each other i can see you talking to each other meeting each other you're in the same country you're in different countries you never know when being part of a community could take your your professional life Um, so just to move on um, with young learners, we are young learner teachers. Um, and Carol Reed, to quote Carol Reed, in Carol Reed's book, um, 500 Activities for the Primary Classroom, Carol Reed says that community is the superordinate for three other important ingredients, communication, collaboration, cooperation. In order to create optimal conditions for learning, 
We need to work towards creating a sense of community. And I think this is equally as valid for learners, primary learners, secondary learners, and teachers of young learners. And finally, um, you might have seen this before. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which he developed in 1943. Now, if you look at the bottom, if we have physiological needs, which is air, water, food, shelter, sleep, clothing, um, we can move up um, the, the, the pyramid. Then we have safety needs, personal security, employment, resources, health, and property. The third one, love and belonging, friendship, intimacy, family, sense of connection. Now, recently, over the past 18 months, I believe that those three bottom parts of the pyramids, physiological, safety, and belonging, have at times not been there. These three things are so important because if you don't have these things, these three things, then you don't have, you struggle to get to the higher parts of the pyramid, which is esteem, status, recognition, strength, freedom, and self-actualization, which is being our best selves. So thinking about work, being our best selves at work is very, very difficult if we don't have those four parts of the pyramid under that. So community links, I think, to physiological safety and love and belonging needs. If we don't have those, we can't perform at our best at work. To conclude, I have some um, just final definitions of community, and then I'll do a few um, question and answers. I think I'll have time. So to conclude, the word community has a strange power to it. It conveys a sense of, a magical sense of togetherness and positivity. Belonging to a community helps us develop a stronger sense of personal and collective identity, gives a boost to our self-esteem and mental well-being. Thinking about professions, a workplace community is a group, team, or organization where there is high trust, effective communication, equality, respect for differences, and high levels of cooperation. And I really found our teachers in those communities of practice that I shared with you earlier in the talk, this is what they found out. Um, high levels of cooperation, equality, respect, trust, hugely important. Finally, learning communities, of which this is one, provide a space and a structure for people to align around a shared goal. These communities enable participants to share results and learn from each other, thereby improving their ability to achieve rapid yet significant progress. And I think this really resonates my experience with the SIG and with this conference that you're all part of today, which I think is fantastic. It really, really enables us to share um, results and learn from each other. So Rachel. just to say, hello. Hi. Hi. Please, please, please wrap up. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to say last that this is the last thing I want to say was thank you for being part of our community, my community, your community. Um, I'm not sure how much time I've got. Um, uh, or if there's any questions, we we haven't really got any time for questions okay. now. Uh, but I just want to thank you very much for uh, this extremely important uh, presentation. We sometimes take communities for granted. And I think that you've made a wonderful point and the comments in the chat are all really positive. A lot of people have shared their own learning and how communities have helped them go through such rough times. Uh, so thank you so much for, for sharing you. something that is vital for us as teachers. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thanks very much, thanks. We're going to have a quick break, a very, very quick break, and we're going to be back soon, everyone. So see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs>